Hi and welcome to week 31 of World History 2. So this week we're going to be looking at five topics. Uh, we're going to be looking at and having a discussion on totalitarianism and fascism, exploring the regimes under Mussolini, Stalin, and the policies of Nazi Germany. So to begin, we're going to talk about Mussolini. So under his rule in Italy, totalitarianism and fascism intertwined to create a formidable regime. Totalitarianism, characterized by centralized authority, censorship, and suppression of opposition, found its expression in Mussolini's leadership. His fascist ideology emphasized nationalism, militarism, and authoritarianism. Mussolini's Italy centralized power under, under his leadership. Establishing a cult of personality. The fascist party controlled all aspects of life, from politics to economics, through propaganda and coercion. Dissent was crushed and opposition parties were banned, ensuring complete loyalty to the regime. We'll then shift our focus to Stalin's Soviet Union, where we see a similar pattern of totalitarianism, but with its uh, own unique characteristics. So, Stalin utilized terror as a tool to maintain control and build a totalitarian state. The Great Purge, for example, of the 1930s saw millions arrested, executed, or sent to labor camps, solidifying Stalin's grip on power. Stalin's grip and his regime employed propaganda, censorship, and a cult of personality as well to maintain control over every aspect of Soviet life. Through the secret police and surveillance, Stalin instilled fear in the population, ensuring compliance with the regime's policies. Next, we'll examine the goals of Soviet foreign policy under Stalin. So the Soviet Union aimed to spread communism internationally, supporting communist movements and revolutions abroad. Stalin's policy of quote-unquote socialism in one country focused on consolidating power domestically while seeking alliances with other communist states. However, this foreign policy also led to tensions with Western powers, particularly during the Cold War. The Soviet Union's expansionist ambitions clashed with the interests of the United States and its allies, resulting in geopolitical conflicts and proxy wars. We'll then shift our attention to the Weimar Republic in Germany. We confront the political and economic challenges it faced, so established after World War I, the Weimar Republic grappled with instability, economic crisis, and political polarization. Uh, economically speaking, hyperinflation, unemployment, and reparations from the Treaty of Versailles desta destabilized the German economy, fueling discontent among the population. Political extremism from both the left and the right threatened the fra fragile democracy paving the way for the rise of extremist parties like the Nazis. So finally, uh, we're going to talk about some of the policies of Nazi Germany under Adolf Hitler. So the Nazi regime implemented totalitarian control over all aspects of society, uh, uh, promoting things such as militarism and nationalism, and Hitler's dictatorship suppressed dissent, uh, and they centralized the power in the hands of the party itself. Uh, Nazi Germany pursued aggressive expansionism, aiming to establish dominance in Europe and beyond. The regime's economic policies focused on rearmament and prioritizing military buildup over the welfare of the population. So, to conclude, totalitarianism and fascism manifested differently under Mussolini, Stalin, and Hitler, but they shared common features, those being authoritarianism, suppression of dissent, and centralized control. Understanding these regimes and their policies is crucial for comprehending the complexities of 20th century history. So that will be the wrap up for our week. I wanna thank you for following along and I hope this was helpful. I look forward to seeing you and working with you in class. Thank you.